why I love RimWorld. Now at some point while you're watching this, you're going to think to yourself, man this Mr. Sir guy sure loves giving his opinion, and some of his takes are kind of biased, and you know what I had to say to that. Holy f look at the title, it says why I love Rim- I first discovered RimWorld. How many people likely found this wonderful stupid game? The YouTube gameplay. Hell, even I've gotten comments from people telling me that I've shown them the way of the rim. The way of the rim. Why am I like? Regardless, it was amazing to see it come full circle because a long, long, very long time ago. In October 2022, I was struggling. Work was difficult. Friends were busy starting families. No girls liked me. I spent most of my days playing PS4 like a total casual while watching YouTube on my phone. On one of these sad, lonely nights, YouTube suggested a video from a YouTuber who shall remain nameless. It's Spiff, the Spiffing Brit. The video in question was a RimWorld video. I didn't know anything about this game and didn't really care to learn about it. I just wanted to watch Spiff while mindlessly playing video games. But wouldn't you know, as he played the game, I grew more and more curious. This game, you can create characters, build bases, harvest people's organs this game had it all i quickly binged all his videos on the silly little game and was instantly hooked i needed to learn more so i wandered over to my shitty pc and dusted the cobwebs from my steam account i purchased rimworld without hesitation now people close to me tell me i have terrible spending habits and honestly i don't know what they're talking about but this game this purchase was a good decision i quickly dove in and like everyone that enters the cold sometimes hot edge of their first rimworld planet had no clue what I was doing. Playing RimWorld for the first time is like having really bad anxiety and being dropped in a social situation where at any moment any of the strangers could fall in love with you or murder your entire family lineage and there's not much you could do about it but build up your walls and defenses and hope you're safe. Aside from that, when you enter your first world, you have almost no idea what you're doing, even a sweaty ass loser like myself who watched and studied countless videos and essays to learn the game, died all the time when I first started, like over and over and over again from stupid things, a squirrel attacking you while you had no weapon, running out of food because you had no idea farming was a thing, a building's roof collapsing on you because you accidentally removed a pillar that's essential to the foundation. This game had endless amounts of ways to kill you, especially when you had no idea what's going on. I was starting a new colony, dying, and starting a new game almost five times a day because every time I had died, I had learned something new and couldn't wait to get back in there with this newfound knowledge. I was googling tips and watching videos while playing the game to ensure I knew what I was doing. I've been playing this game for over a year now and I've invested over 500 hours into it and I'm still learning. Hell, I just wrapped up a 10 episode series where the entire saga was just a slew of countless mistakes. I had comments from people telling me I was doing things wrong, and friends messaging me separately on how to do things more efficiently. And that's my point. The learning never stops. And that's one of my favorite things about this game. Which brings me to my next reason. The game is relentless. If you love to learn through the method of failing, let me introduce you to a friend of mine, Randy Random. This mother but RimWorld has storytelling options. Want to play peacefully? Then choose Phoebe, who gives you a long break between challenges, leaving the player with enough time to rest and recover after an event, and live without much to worry about. If you want the classic experience, then you choose Cassandra. She's the default storyteller. In the beginning, she'll always send a single mad animal, followed by a single raider, within 10 days from arrival. And then there's Randy Random, who throws a countless slew of bullshit your way. He's the wild storyteller, whose main characteristic is triggering challenges at any time, to the extent of launching several dangerous threats all at the same time or consecutively. Now, regardless which storyteller option you pick, RimWorld will still test you. If you're playing a little too well, the game knows just how to rock the boat to make you second guess everything. Is every one of your colonists in a good mood and healthy? Here's the plague. Leave a kid alone at your base briefly? Here's a raid to try to kill the kid. I can't even begin to list all the issues that will occur simply because you're succeeding. Simply Google craziest RimWorld stories and enjoy reading, my friend. Here are a few examples of RimWorld stories I found and wanted to share. A raid happened and my combat guy killed Raider 1 and wounded Raider 2. 
I decided to capture Raider 2 to convert him to the team. To do this, I tried to make his room look nice with a statue. I had Combat Guy make the statue. He made a statue of himself killing Raider 2's friend. The Raider I captured had a mental breakdown and ran around naked. I love this game. I had five tribesmen building a colony. One day they all died of a heat stroke. I spent days fast forwarding and watching them decay, their corpses, vomit, and blood scattered around the buildings they created. Finally, a girl came across the ghost town. There was hope. Unfortunately, she did not have the required skills to clean up the blood and vomit, nor move or bury the bodies. She spent a week living amongst the stench of death, slowly driving herself into insanity. Eventually, another girl came along, but she also could not clean or bury bodies. They both did what they could to survive, living off the food stockpile left by the craters of their new home. A week later, a third wanderer came across the settlement. He buried the dead and cleaned up the blood. A year on, we are now thriving with 10 colonists and many more to come. Probably should have researched air conditioning sooner though. <laughs> and that's what I mean, this game is just something else. But I suggest diving in yourself and experiencing your own unique chaotic scenarios. Chaos is literally the name of the game, but luckily, there's some quality of life adjustments that can help ease the never ending pain. There was a point when I was a few hundred hours into the game where I became frustrated. You could only take so much senseless death and inefficiency before losing your patience. At least for me, that was the case. For an example, why wouldn't my colonists pick up everything they could carry when hauling things when they had the inventory to do so? Why can't colonists move while shooting to avoid being hit at close range? Enter the modding community. RimWorld has one of the best modding communities I've ever seen. Regardless what little thing was driving you crazy, there's likely a mod to fix that issue. I personally play with a lot of mods, but none of them take away from the classic RimWorld experience. They're all quality of life improvements. Things like being able to add wall lights to your base. Colonists can now carry sidearms to help with close range battles. More storage options so you can neatly organize your inventory and trigger that heavenly slice of serotonin that you've been lacking in your everyday life. And one of the best mods, Interaction Bubbles, which adds an extra layer of story building. There's nothing better than watching your colonists bond and clash while living in close quarters. There's just a ton of mods to help make the experience better. And I can't say enough for the community, they are amazing. Quick note, there's also a mod that introduces zombies to RimWorld, which is a ton of fun. I 100% plan on making a video covering that mod alone. I will scratch that itch that The Walking Dead failed to- Anyways. Speaking of entertainment, there's another reason why RimWorld is my favorite go-to when I want to kill some time. This game. This game is perfect. It takes you by the hand and leads you down a path that neither you or the game knows what will happen. I can literally rant for hours on end about all the RimWorld playthroughs I've played and completed. I remember every single one of them. Once you play with the colony long enough, it becomes one with you. The best way I can describe it is that it's similar to a book series, but each book has different characters and different plot points, but lives within the same universe. After completing each book, you'll look back at each fondly. Reading books, what am I even saying? Who even reads books nowadays? What am I fucking losing? The storytelling in this game is just something else. In the recent RimWorld series I completed, I legitimately felt sad when it ended. I was so incredibly attached to the colonists and everything that had happened. And I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way. I look back on that series as a good memory that I could just relive by clicking on it. There's no doubt that I will continue to create new colonies and new beginnings. And I will certainly make more RimWorld series on this channel. It just means that much to me. There is literally no way for me to convey how great the storytelling in this game is and how much that dictates the appeal of it. It's probably the sole reason that keeps me coming back. I remember telling my friends some of the shenanigans I got into with this game and without fail, they started playing it as well. And to avoid sounding like this is some puff piece, let's discuss the final reason why I love RimWorld. This past year, I really have become your typical DJant gamer, playing video games on one monitor and some video playing on the other. The switch from console gaming took hold of me and did not let go. RimWorld played a huge part in that. This was the first game I can play when I was excited, tired, happy or sad. It was so incredibly easy to log on and escape for hours at a time. I would work from home and immediately after 5pm, 
switch over to RimWorld and would often play until 3 a.m. almost nightly to the point where it was becoming a real problem. I believe in the first month of owning this game, I logged upwards of 200 hours, which comes out to about 8 days, and I really wish I was kidding when I said that. This game is just so fun. It was the escape I needed. It made the loneliness of working from home hurt less. It made the lack of a social life less noticeable. Now, there is good and bad that comes with this. I am a creature of habit and dive headfirst into almost everything I enjoy. So even though RimWorld was providing this super fun experience, it was also a slight issue. Yes, I have a total blast playing this game and watching YouTube all night, every night. But that slowly started to affect my job and my overall energy. Now you're probably thinking, oh just put the game down or manage your time more wisely, but I couldn't. This game is just that great. But because I did notice how unproductive I was being, I had to make a slight change. Which is also the sole reason why I started this YouTube channel in the first place. I was playing RimWorld too much, so my plan was to start making content out of it so I could shift some focus towards editing. I figured that would be a healthier use of my time and a project to keep me busy and oh boy, what a decision that was. Now I upload content all the time and can't help myself from taking this seriously. It's just in my nature and I do have RimWorld to thank for that. Not only is it still my favorite game, but it's led me to try different things. To recap, before RimWorld, I was a Chad who played PlayStation, went outside and talked to women. After RimWorld, I'm a loser who purchased an expensive gaming PC and now runs a YouTube channel. On a serious note, I want to thank everyone for watching this video. This video is different from the content I normally make and for that reason, was incredibly fun and scary to make. Also, I can't believe I had you watch a semi-serious video on why a random man on the internet loves a video game. But thank you so much for sticking around. Please don't forget to like the video, it does let me know if you prefer this kind of content. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.